Good morning, good morning. This is Reverend Nelson Yancey White with Yancey Family Ministries. So glad to be with you another blessed Saturday morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Oh, I have so much to share with you today, but let me start with my morning shout out, starting with my loving husband, Reverend Johnny M. White Sr., pastor of Olive Grove Missionary Baptist Church, and good morning to our church family. Also, good morning to my monthly subscribers of the podcast. Thank you so much for your monthly sowing a seed, and I appreciate it. And I invite others to become a monthly subscriber. Amen. And I also want to say good morning to my honoree sponsors, Brother Larry Downey and his lovely wife, Linda. Oh, I want to let you know that also on my podcast, there is an option to not only support if you desire to do that, and you can counsel at any time. So you can go in. When you do go in, you will see the support button. But if you look right beneath, underneath the support button, you will see another option option that says fan mail they have added that to the podcast so if you ever want to send me a message about the program anytime you can select fan mail and just type away and it comes directly to my podcast account again i invite you to support by giving monthly as little as three dollars a month and you can cancel at any time and also i invite you to send me messages about the program i would like to hear from you. Amen. I know Facebook is a little public and everybody gets to see, but if you ever want to send it for my eyes only, again, it comes directly to my podcast account. It does not give me a name. I have tested this. It only give me a few digits of a cell number that it comes from or a little identifier, but not a name. So it's somewhat anonymous, but you can put your name in the message if you desire to do so. Again, I pray if you do send me a message, it's only an encouraging message. Amen. I do know that it's tempting to send people messages other than supporting, but I encourage you to, if you did, if you want to do that, you have the option right there in the podcast and the option says fan mail right below support. Oh, I got a lot. I'm about to run out of time already using up time, but I need to let you know, announce three things. Amen. On this Saturday, which is July the 20th. The pastor and I will be supporting good friends of ours, Reverend Dave, Dr. Alvin Downing, amen, and later Felicia. They are celebrating their pastoral anniversary. We will be with them at the Granville County Convention and Expo Center right here in Oxford. And their guest preacher will be Reverend Dr. J. Vincent Terry Sr. Again, happy anniversary again to Reverend Dr. Alvin Downing Sr. and Lady Felicia. We love them dearly. And that's three o'clock on today. And also going on, also going on, on July the 25th, which is Thursday at 7 p.m. We will be with our pastor, Reverend Johnny M. White Sr., we will be at Hawkins Chapel Revival at 7 o'clock, and that is in Franklin to North Carolina. It will be our pastor and our congregation and our music department, and we're looking forward to that. It will be the choir accompanying him. So we just thank God for that opportunity to fellowship with them again. And I did tell you that the Yanceys, amen, will be at the program um, to celebrate 30 years in ministry with overseas. Kevin C. Blaylock, senior pastor, 30 years in ministry, and it's going to be a banquet at three o'clock on July the 27th. Amen. And we're looking forward to that. You can get tickets. They are, do have tickets available and you can call 252-701- 0161. If you would like to contact them for tickets and also appearing on that program is the Melody Voices of Praise, the Yanceys and New Creation of Hillsboro. Oh, three awesome groups. Oh, the Lord. Oh, it's going to be a blessed service. Amen. And the guest speaker will be Reverend Dr. J. Gentile Everett, um, Senior Pastor of Mill Branch Baptist Church of Fairmont, North Carolina. Amen. I am so looking forward to this. And I'm just thanking God that we're able, amen, to all fellowship 
together. Again, if you want tickets, that's 252-701-0161. Again, for the Overseer Kevin C. Blaylock, Senior Pastor, 30th year, 30 years in ministry. I got to get to the word. Amen. Those are all my announcements. And I pray that if you're not able to join these services, I make them known to you that you be in prayer for these services. Amen. That you will uplift and help us celebrate and thank God for these years that people are celebrating being in ministry. Amen. I want to go to the word. Matthew, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to get through what the Lord had placed on my heart, but in the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter. I am still talking about Peter and Jesus, and I'm going to read verses 21 down to verse 26. And the word of God says, from that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, far be it from you, Lord, this should not not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. For what profit it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Amen. I went over this last Saturday and I had something pressed on me this week when I looked at the text again. I had all things I was going to talk about, but it's, I sort of shifted in a different direction. And I thank the Holy Spirit for bringing some things to my attention because I want to talk a little bit about Peter. Um, first of all, we all know Peter is bold. Amen. Um, I kept looking at the text and I said, what in the world would possess him to pour Jesus to the side? Amen. To rebuke him about what he just said, you know, um, to, to co- sort of correct Jesus. What in the world was he thinking? Amen. I know you were thinking like me. Um, I, I wouldn't have the nerve to pour Jesus, <laughs> the Savior, the one that I just proclaimed, proclaimed as the son of God. Amen. He is the one. Amen. I I wouldn't dare pull, you know, wouldn't dare pull him aside to correct him at anything he said, but yet this is what Peter did. Amen. I realized that when Jesus turned to Peter, that he said, get behind me, Satan. He didn't say, get behind me, Peter. Amen. The spirit of the Lord brought that to me. Um, and and he, he didn't tell Peter get behind him. He told Satan. Um, Jesus was recognizing that Peter was being used by Satan. And he also wanted Peter to understand that he was being used, that he was in error. Um, that's why he turned to Peter. But he knew what was taking over Peter's mind. Um, we know that Satan is more mindful of the things of men than the things of God. God, but Jesus was uh, addressing Satan. Amen. Um, that, that sort of helped me a little bit because sometimes I want to address the person what I need to address. Um, the author of who's trying to rule them. Amen. The one that has is using them for, um, to work against the things of God. Amen. Um, I may, I hope I made that clear. But here were Peter. He didn't rebuke. Um, he didn't tell Peter get behind him. He told Satan. Um, and, and I kept thinking about this. And right before this occurred, um, he said, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Amen. And he said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And I looked at that and I thought about, well, all of that went on before Peter decided he needed to correct Jesus. Amen. But Jesus didn't change his mind about Peter. Um, Peter was being used of Satan, but he didn't change his mind about Peter. That was so encouraging to me. Um, 
Jesus is letting him know that your thinking is contrary to God's plan. Uh, in other words, you Satan is is using you at this moment. Amen. Oh, and I got happy when I thought about that because I think I wish Jesus would sometime pull me to the side. Amen. And turn to me and tell Satan, get behind me. Hallelujah. Because I know sometime, and this was interesting to me. I shouldn't say interesting. This is en- enlightening to me because I was like, if Peter... So quickly being used by Satan, uh, we don't, and he walked with Christ, uh, and he saw the things that Christ was doing. We know of Christ, and we're getting to know him in the spirit realm, uh, and through the soul, and through prayer, and through fasting, uh, and through communing with him. But here Peter's walking with him, and how easily Satan was able to use him to come against the plan of God. Um, Satan was going to save his, his Lord and Savior, but that will been an error that is contrary to God's plan. And it brings me to this point right here. This is what rested with me. Um, I I kept thinking about Peter and I said, Peter has a self image. Um, Peter has a self perception. Um, Peter was looking at himself in a certain way that actually was contrary um, to God's plan. Peter saw his role in a way uh, with Christ that was contrary to God's plan. His self perception, his self image image um, got in a way um, it kept rising to the surface amen um, he said because even Christ told him that he would deny him um, there was so much going on in Peter's life um, in his walk with Christ and I think it was his self image his self perception how he saw himself amen this is what the spirit rested with me and I started to examine my own self image my own self perception come on self perception in includes our self-concept, the image we have in our heads of who we are. Self-perception can have a strong influence on what activities we do, how much effort we put into things, um, and how likely we are to do it again. When I looked at that and started studying, I said, Lord, help us with our self-perception. Come on. Um, Because this is what was going on, I believe, in my heart. This is what was going on, that that Peter saw himself. um, There was a difference between between what God told Peter to do and what Peter thought God wanted him to do. Amen. That's how that summed up in my spirit. And I looked at my life and I said, there are things that God has told me to do. And there are things I think God wants me to do. And that line can get blurred just a little bit. Um, it can, one can supersede the other. Um, and I think in a lot of cases when I was thinking about the decisions that are facing me, I said, ah, oh, I need to really walk with the Lord about this because I can't run off because I just might make my decision based on what I think God wants me to do versus what God wants me to do. Amen. That, that, that mind, that self-image, that self-perception, uh, my concept of who I am and who God, what God wants me to do. Amen. I pray that I made that clear. Um, Peter had good intentions, just like we all have good intentions. Um, we come to church meetings. We come into the house of worship. We come into the prayer line. We do all kinds of things in our missionary work. But there are things that God told us to do, and there are things we think God want us to do. Um, and we put our efforts in what we think God want us to do. And here, right here, right here, in the good intentions come time, our efforts can be missed placed and that's why it's important for our personal relationship that time with God that time of fasting and prayer when we're faced with difficult decisions that time that we need to commune with him that time we need to tarry with him that time we need to be hallelujah and we need to be slow we need to study to be quiet because our good intentions our efforts could be misplaced and our thoughts are not his thoughts hallelujah our ways are not his ways and there are times that God would allow 
allow us to be wrong. And there are times that he will come in and correct us and redirect us. Come on. If we desire to come after him, let us deny ourselves, our own perceptions of our own selves and what we think God wants and take up our cross and follow him. Amen. I pray that this encourage your heart, that we have to examine our self perceptions and our self image. Amen. Thank you for tuning in today and spending time with me and remember today and throughout every day to rejoice and be glad. Why? God loves you.